Hi, welcome back to my channel. Madam Web, 2024's Morbius. The two movies share a lot. Writers, a cinematic universe, nearly identical Rotten Tomatoes scores. It is certainly one of the movies that will come out this year. As soon as pre-sale began, my girlfriend and I dropped everything, which we did not need to do, it did not pre-sell well, and we got two tickets to see it in IMAX on our month anniversary. We had seen the first trailer, which dropped less than three months before the movie did, and we knew this was a cinematic experience we would not want to miss. All of the marketing was genius. They had the look, which was revealed on a bottle of ocean spray. They had the line. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. They had the posters, which all showed the people's faces, except for the one that kind of looks like Spider-Man. They kept him in the mask so that maybe somebody's grandma thinks, oh, there's a new Spider-Man movie coming out. Well, no, there's not, grandma. Does the guy on the poster look like this guy? No. Not even a little bit. Yes, of course I have the first Spider-Man comic to feature Big Wheel. It's my second most valuable possession behind this can of Sprite Cranberry, which is unopened, still has stuff in it, and is from before the pandemic. One day this is gonna be worth $2 billion. And not just because of inflation. All of it was perfect fodder for the internet to gobble up, and it worked. There were memes and tweets and shit posts galore, and I know that sounds like Morbius, but it was different this time because her web connected us all. The movie cost about as much to make as Surf's Up did, and that's the greatest movie ever made. They had Dakota Johnson and Sidney Sweeney. I've seen Suspiria, I've seen Euphoria. Those are talented actors. Surely this would be the budding fourth act of The Spunk, the Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters. I would say just call it the Spider-Verse, but given the distinct lack of Spider-Man in these movies, I think Spunk fits just fine. And what a press tour this movie had. Someone had to explain that he was in the Amazon meme to Dakota Johnson, and that went great. You might be aware there was a line from the trailer that went sort of viral, do you, do you remember that? What was it? It was the line that says, he was in the Amazon with my mum when she was researching spiders right before she died. Do you, do you remember that going viral? Why well? did that go viral? I think it went viral because out of context, people were just like, what does this mean? Somebody and brought this up and I have no idea what it's about. There were lots of memes because I think people were like, what is, just out of the context of it, it was just a very... But isn't bizarre. any sentence out of context, out of context? There was just lots of bits that were like, oh that, and that, and that. Do you know what I mean? The interviewer's not gonna go, oh, it went viral because it's a it's really awkward line. Like, that's not a thing that a person would say to another person. It sounds like a line from a movie trailer where they need to explain the plot of something really quickly. So she is right. We also learned that Dakota Johnson talked to Elizabeth Olsen, who plays the Scarlet Witch in the MCU, about acting in superhero movies. And Dakota describes a conversation like she's received a terminal diagnosis. When I got the Madame Web role, I ran into um, Lizzie Olsen in the hotel lobby and spoke to her about it for a bit. And that was helpful. She said she had a great time and was seemed very l relaxed about it. So that was comforting. Yeah, I came home and immediately my kids knew something was up. Things were different, but I was too emotional at the time to really talk to them. So their dad comes in, says it's gonna be okay. Things are going to be all right. And they go, Papa, what's wrong? And my husband, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I just, I love that man so much. Um, he, he grabs the kids and says, mom is going to play big wheel. And they say, what does that mean? Um, which is a good question, but none of us really know how these things are going to go. I mean, there's no blueprint for this thing. It's just a whole lot of blue screens. She also left her talent agency a week after the trailer dropped, which makes me think she thought she was going to be in an MCU movie. She talks to Elizabeth Olsen about being in an MCU movie. The trailer drops, she finds out she's covered in spunk, and she immediately fires the people responsible for the mess. As of me recording this, she has not seen this movie, but I have. I've seen it one time, and even after what everyone else had said, I did not know what I was in for. Round one, I wore my best movie socks. Like the movie! And we were off. It was a lovely Wednesday afternoon as we made our way to the theater, and I couldn't wait for that to be ruined. 
from the we were seeing it in IMAX which meant we rode the big escalator past the big window on our way to the big disappointment this is the most empty I've ever seen this place we doubled the number of people in the theater when we walked in and as Nicole Kidman set the mood it was time for Madam Webb we come to this place for magic day one of watching Madam Webb the movie is not very good. In fact, I would say that it is very bad. She did have a cat named Cat. Great. I love that. After the movie ended the first time, I turned to Christine and I was like, I'm gonna have to watch this six more times. And we both just started laughing. I don't want to see this six more times. Until I was crying, and I don't know if it was tears. I don't know if it was tears from laughing so much, or if it was tears of devastation. One of the very first jokes in the movie is uh, Uncle Ben, who's uh, Cassandra's EMT partner. They get Chinese food. Her fortune comes, and it's partially blank. She doesn't have any fortune. And he's like, oh, well, you know what that means? That means that their printer's broken, which means we can't get Chinese food from them anymore. Does he think that every Chinese restaurant prints the their own fortunes for their own fortune cookies? They don't make those in-house. They make the rest of the food there, but they just like buy them. When they're eating Chinese food, he's like, so I'm seeing someone, and she goes, oh, what's her name? And he doesn't tell her. And she's like, oh, so this one's serious, huh? And that's, that's it. That's it for the whole movie. It's like so genuinely a bad movie. About like halfway through, it feels like nothing is happening at all. Oh, also, when she goes to Peru, <laughs> she's like, hold on, I'll be right back. Drops off the kids with Uncle Ben and goes to Peru. And you're like, oh, she's wanted for kidnapping right now. People think that she assaulted those police officers. They think it's all her. How was she possibly going to get on a plane and go to Peru? So she says, I got to go. C close the car door. Cut to Peru. How are we already there? And how does she get back? <laughs> this is a movie that needs to be watched in IMAX. <laughs> if there was ever a movie that I felt like IMAX added to the experience, it was this. Because it's like barely an action movie. It's mostly just people standing around and talking. Cassie allegedly hates her mom, and we know this because at the baby shower, there's a game where everyone writes down one happy memory with their mom, and she leaves hers blank. So Emma Roberts, AKA Peter Parker's mom, picks it up and is like, whoa, you didn't write anything on yours. And she's like, oh, that's mine. Um, I don't have any positive memories of my mom. She died while she was in childbirth. But don't worry, you'll be fine. She didn't have to put that slip of paper in there. No, she didn't have to put the slip of paper in there at all. She could just said, hey, this is, this is not a game for me, and that's okay. It's your day, not mine. And then the next game they play is just name the baby. Which is just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, all right, is it Steven? No. Okay, is it Sam? No. Is it Richard Jr.? No, he wishes. How was anyone ever gonna guess the name of the baby? How many executives were like, I know what to do to fix this movie. We just show that these people will eventually be spider people, but they don't do any Spider-Man stuff for the whole movie. This is the most setting up a movie for the sequel movie I've ever seen. And based on box office returns, that will not be the case. I can't believe I'm seeing this movie six more times. My letterbox is gonna look so funny at the end of the year. Your most viewed actress is a thousand percent going to be Dakota Johnson or Sydney Sweeney. Whichever one I see one other movie of theirs, that's the one that will be my most viewed actor for the year. As my girlfriend and I were getting ready to see the movie, I said, wouldn't it be funny if I watched this every day for a week, kind of like Eddie Burback did with Morbius? And she said, what? And so I showed her that video. And she was like, well, now you have to do this. Clearly that is inspiring what I'm doing here today. I don't... I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear. I'm not gonna act like this is the most original idea I've ever had, but I'm doing it for two more days. So I'm, I'm getting ready to go again because that's what Dakota Johnson wants. So while my character in the movie may be able to see the future, 
I also can. And I know what the future brings. I know that when you see Madam Web, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. Why is the promotion for this movie so horny? Is it because Dakota Johnson is best known for Fifty Shades of Grey? Is it because Sydney Sweeney is in the movie? She was in an R-rated rom-com, which was way less gooner brain than this. Madam Web is a sexless movie. There's no romantic subplot. Adam Scott as Ben Parker says, I've got a serious girlfriend and it's never brought up again. There are two pregnant people, one of which is Cassandra Webb's mother, who begins this movie 40 weeks pregnant? Sydney Sweeney does tie the bottom of her shirt and dance on a table one time. So is this movie supposed to be for the boys? Is this movie supposed to be for women? Is this movie supposed to be for anyone? I cannot believe I'm doing this again. At least I have more fun movie socks. On a rainy New York night like this, obviously I wanna go see Madam Web for a second time. As I walked towards the theater, I noticed they had taken the Madam Web poster down from the side and replaced it with one from Tenet, a movie that also deals with weird timelines and flopped at the box office. They're basically the same thing, I guess. My friend Rachel joined me tonight and she didn't wave back. What a coward! I'll see you in two hours. Bye bye. This sounds like a voicemail. We come to AMC theaters to laugh, to cry, to care. Because we need that. All of us. I've gotta say, watching this a second time, very fun. I knew all the big moments when the audience would laugh, and it was a packed house. There were 16 people for a 9.30 showing on a Thursday. Unheard of numbers. A second viewing makes this movie seem so long. There are some scenes where people are just talking, but it's not like regular dialogue where character A will talk and then character B will talk and then they'll talk over each other maybe, like in a good thing. Character A will talk and then no one will say anything. And then character B will start their sentence and then finish it. And then character A will say something back. And most of these scenes have no music underscoring them. So it's just kind of quiet. And everything moves very slowly. So the bad guy, Ezekiel Sims, great name for a villain. He's barefoot in every scene. Dogs waggling, barking. He's barefoot in his apartment. He's barefoot on the streets of New York, he's barefoot on the subway. Thank goodness this man was bitten by a magical spider that can cure hundreds of diseases. Cause otherwise he would have all 100 of those diseases. He wouldn't be whatever weird spider person. He doesn't have a villain name. I wish they would have given him one. He's just Ezekiel Sims, which is a good name for a bad guy, but not a good name for a super villain. He wouldn't be Zeke Sims. He would be the shambling disease. Just infecting everyone he ever comes in contact with because his grubby little toes are snatching up everything they can in this beautiful city. He's got some hired hacker and she's at the computer going, okay, well, based on what you've told me from your dreams, this is what the three women look like. And then it brings up just three pictures of the three actresses. It's like, this is not from the dream. This is just a photo of Sydney Sweeney. Everyone in this movie also has the secondary superpower of being able to teleport. The girls are in the woods and they're like, there's this diner like five minutes away. It's bright outside. They walk to the diner. It's the middle of the night. Cassie shows up to the woods and is like, where are my madams? And then goes to find the diner and it takes her no time at all to get there. She gets there in one listening of the song Toxic, and it's probably the radio edit of Toxic, which is even shorter. I'm still not over her going to Peru. That scene happens so quickly where Maddie's like, you've got to go to Peru. And then Cassie's like, hey, Ben, watch the girls. I'm going to Peru for a week. And then she closes the door and we're in Peru. This woman is wanted for murder and kidnapping. How does she get on an international flight and how does she get one back? Getting back, I think would be a little easier, except for then she has to go through international customs. I've watched this twice now and I think any reasonable person would say, all right, two times for this movie. I think that's good. I think that's healthy. I think that's normal. So I have five more days of this to go. Madam Webb's ability is to see the future and use that 
to change her actions to maybe change the outcome. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm burping because I've had some Pepsi, a Pepsi product by Pepsi. Seeing this movie and then seeing it again, I know what's coming. I can sort of glimpse into the future there. So maybe by changing what I do, I can make my viewing experience better every time. Maybe my web will be what connects us all. So the movie tonight was at 930. I pulled out my phone and the movie was rolling credits by 1146. Because of work and some social obligations, the only time I can see it tomorrow is in the morning, which means I left the theater for seeing Madam Web around 1146 and I'll be back in the theater at 10 a.m. I think that's how I ended the last sentence. There were only four people at this showing, but one of them had the seat directly in front of me, so I was very self-conscious. I started my day by seeing this omen, and I should have known it was not one of joy. It's like in the movie, but messed up. But hey, I'm no Madam Web. I can't see the future yet. I had a lot to look forward to. The second was better than the first, so surely the third will be even better than that. <laughs> Yes. It was another viewing in IMAX, which meant another empty theater. I forgot to film my socks in the morning, but I've still got movie ones on, and my efforts to change the future meant this time I wore a hat. Hey, if it worked for Ninja, who's to say it couldn't work for me? Good job. You you can tell what a hat is. All right, the fuck. Watch the movie. That indescribable feeling we get when the lights begin to dim. And we go somewhere we've never been before. This was easily the worst one. The hat did not work. I'm never fucking wearing a hat to see Madam Web again. I'm also never seeing it in IMAX. I gotta hear the full Nicole Kidman. The thing is, the movie that's in the theater is not the movie that they made on set. There are so many times when people talk and you can see their lips are not moving or it's just showing the person they're talking to and it's clearly some ADR line. Also, sort of darkly funny that the first woman-led movie in The Spunk just features them getting brutally murdered over and over again. Was that how they thought they were gonna get women into the theater? It's clearly not any of these people's fault. This is a movie where the studio was already gonna intervene heavily, and then they saw the reaction to Morbius, and it definitely made them intervene more. Luckily, because I did these back-to-back, -back, I'll get to go a whole 24 hours without watching Madam Web. But I'll try again tomorrow, and hopefully things go better. I just, I feel physically so bad, and part of that's because I drank coffee and I'm dehydrated. But I also think part of it was the movie. Alright, day four. I put on my bee socks because I felt like a bug caught in Madam Webbs. If only there was a word for how I'm feeling. Luckily, some more friends agreed to go with me, but we had to book it to the theater. Sweet. We gotta go! We gotta go! I knew we were gonna be a little late, so I explained the start of the film on the train, and as we walked in, I felt a new dread come over me. These are innocent people. I could have saved them. I knew what their fates would be, and here I was doing nothing to stop it. I could have tried to change their future and oh shit, I forgot to do something new. This is gonna be the same. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn together. Fourth time watching, uh, it's one in the morning now, specifically two in the morning right now. We were at the last showing at 11 p.m. I went with some new friends, people who have not seen it yet. As much as I was watching the movie, I was watching the other people around me watch the movie. Because that's where I can actually find some bit of positivity there. Would you agree that it's more fun to watch the people watching the movie than to watch the movie? Yes, especially the people I don't know watching the movie. We were a smidge late, so we missed the opening bit in the Amazon. But I didn't realize this watching the other times. They show that scene, like, almost in its entirety when she's having the flashback in the pool. There are lines of dialogue cut, but everything else happens. Every, like, every bit of the scene is shown. So why do we see the beginning at all? The ADR is so bad. That's, it's not the movie that they filmed. When do we get to see the original cut of this movie? <laughs> Let the villain, who, like, there's a compelling nugget there, where, like, if you knew how you were gonna die, I'm, most people would take some sort of preventative measures, but like let him start 
there and work his way towards, I need to kill these teenagers. Don't have it start at, I need to kill these teenagers. That's way too high stakes. Yeah, Simon. Yeah. So much of this movie is shot on a Dutch angle. At the beginning, it's every scene with Ezekiel Sims. Just because the bad guy is on screen doesn't mean things have to be visually askew. And every time, every time, there's a mesh surface, a porous surface, a, any sort of a surface with holes, they do a rack focus to it. Because that's like her web even though it doesn't look like her web. Her web doesn't look like a web. That's the biggest thing. Her web looks like a ball of twine. It doesn't look like a spider web. So why are we focusing on all the things that look like spider webs and not all the things that also look like balls of twine? Having the 24 hour break was good. I needed that. You're not gonna have it again. No, I won't get that 24 hour break ever again. And you know that's okay. There's no like layers here. For a movie about being able to see the future, it does not warrant additional viewings at all. There's nothing that you see the second time and you're like, oh, I get why they did that. And I have to watch it three more times. It's a movie. And her web is connecting us all. After four days, I knew I needed to touch some grass. That doesn't count. Thank you. The thing about Madam Web is it's a movie that takes itself very seriously when so much of the shit that happens in it is so goofy. And the thing is, I gotta watch it again, and then I have to watch it another time. And then there's a, a third time, and then I'm free but I'm not there yet. I know where all the jokes land. I know exactly the order of all the scenes. I know when all the car honks are. And like when I'm watching it with other people, it definitely helps because I get to see my friends look at this ridiculous thing that's in front of both of us and see them go, wow, isn't that so funny? And feel some sort of like interpersonal connection. Like, hey, we're both seeing this ridiculous thing. Isn't that crazy? But today, I'm alone. And the last time I saw it alone, it was the third time. And that was not very good. Here's hoping I find something with it. There's something about it that I wasn't expecting, but I just don't know how that's possible. It's the hope that gets you. What else is there to say? I didn't wear fun socks. My morale is at an all time low. Here goes another two hours of my life watching what is essentially a feature length Darman video. Guy steals a spider, instantly regrets it. Or 30 years later regrets it. I like to think of myself as a positive guy. I like going to the movies, but not like this. Not when it's Madam Web again. Dazzling images on a huge silver screen sound that I can feel. The last half hour is the best part because it's almost over and because that's where all the ridiculous shit happens. It just feels like nothing happens and then all of a sudden everything's happening and you're like, how did we get here? Why are we here? <laughs> What's going on? You wouldn't set out to make this movie. I don't think they did. Madam Web does not have any like physical powers, right? It's all, it's all metaphysical. She was not gifted the greater physical gifts of the venom or of the spider or of whatever that man in his neatly iron shirt and ascot had to say in Peru. Most of the time she just looks into the future to know where Ezekiel Sims is gonna be standing so she can hit him with a car. That's not like, <laughs> why do they keep putting Madam Web into situations where she needs to use physical combat to get out of them. The sixth time can only be better, right? People who've gotten married six times say that's the best one. I don't think I've explicitly said this, but I've certainly thought it. The movie takes place in 2003 in New York. Cassandra Webb is being tracked both by Ezekiel Sims with his stolen NSA tech, and I won't say necessarily she's being tracked by the NYPD, but she is actively considered a kidnapper. She's considered a criminal. And in New York City, in 2003, she takes an international flight to Peru and an international flight back. Even if she left out of Newark, not a single camera. The last half hour of the movie is the best part. There are just more things that happen and most of them are ridiculous and they come in such quick succession that you're like, all right, 
something's going on. And in that last half hour is when Cassandra Webb loses her sight. And she says, I can see more clearly now than ever before. So maybe, maybe I need to see the movie through her eyes, which is to say, maybe I don't need to see the movie. What I need to do is experience it. Maybe I should get to the theater and then I actually do that and we'll go from there. What I definitely need is caffeine so I don't fall asleep in the middle of the movie. I had to pull my jeans up to show off these socks, the designs up on the top. Hey, stop it. Stop, don't do that. I made my way to the theater with a renewed sense of purpose. This is how I changed my future. This is how I get jiggy with it. Okay, white boy. As I pulled out a scrap of a t-shirt from my friend's old cat cafe, I knew this would be the one. Once I couldn't see, everything would be crystal clear. Enlightenment was 120 minutes away, and all I had to do was listen for it. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. And she guided me all the way home. The thing about watching Madam Web for the sixth time is that it's not the worst time you've ever seen Madam Web. Certainly not the best, but it's not the worst. I had a better time watching this movie blindfolded than I did two or three other times I watched this. When you can't see what's happening, some things are genuinely surprising. Those gunshots at the beginning spooked me a little bit. Some of the women getting brutally murdered I was scared, there were some scary noises. I thought I was gonna need some help staying awake, you know, I'd be blindfolded, I joked about needing caffeine earlier. As soon as it was in my lap, it wasn't even on my face, just as soon as it was there and I knew it was a thing I was gonna do, I was immediately so aware of everyone around me. And it was definitely because there were so few people there. If I was in a packed theater, no issue putting a blindfold on. But because there were so few other people there, one of them could reasonably come up to me and be like, hey, what's, what are you doing? What's going on? We're at the movie. You don't want to see it? And trying to get some footage of me in the blindfold as sort of proof that I was wearing it during the movie. I reach my hand into my pocket. I pull out my phone, press the camera button, and it gives that little bit of haptic feedback. So I know I'm in the camera now. I press what I thought was the record button, and that also gives you a little bit of haptic feedback. And then I saw a big white light flashing from my phone. I was like, that's weird. That's not supposed to happen. I had taken a picture instead of a video. So this is the picture I took in the middle of Madam Web. I did get video later, but I did have to peek under the mask, not to watch the movie, just to look at my phone, put it back down to prove that I was watching the movie with the blindfold on. I didn't just take that picture of my face. Before I flipped it around to be the front facing camera, I took seven pictures of my jeans. These are all very different, distinct photos. When the movie ended and I pulled up the mask, it was so bright, I immediately dropped my phone. It felt like I got flash banged. I take back everything I said about the first hour and a half being boring. That's not true. The first half hour is really boring. It moves at a glacial pace. The only bit of excitement came when during the scene where Ezekiel Sims brings that NSA agent higher up, whoever it is, to his apartment to seal the technology. Uh, during that scene, something touched my leg. I think it was a mouse because I thought I heard some tip tapping on the seats next to me, but it could have just been another person in the theater. As soon as it happened, I was immediately on high alert. I thought people were just gonna be fucking with me the whole movie. So I definitely didn't fall asleep after that. But during the scene in the optometrist's office where she's talking about her visions and the doctor's like, hey, just, you know, take some time off work. Watch some old movies. You just almost died. Take a minute, huh? During that scene, I was like, we're here? We're only at this point in the movie? It feels like it's been the full two hours. I also thought a lot about how blind people watch movies. It made me think about movies in a way that I had never thought of them before. Luckily, during Madam Web, there are a ton of natural pauses in dialogue where ALDs can give visually impaired people a description of what's going on. I didn't have that because I didn't ask for one going in but I also didn't need that because I've seen the movie five times. There were some points where just no one's talking and there's no background music and my mind was wandering all over the place. I was thinking about all kinds of stuff. I was thinking about the next level of Last of Us I have to play. I was thinking about 
how I'm going to see this movie again tomorrow. I was thinking about how there's a reasonable chance Pitbull might be my number one artist for this year, given what I've listened to so far. And then something would happen and I'd be like, oh right, I'm watching Madam Web right now. This was far from the worst viewing, and I don't know if that says more about the movie or about me, but I've only got to do this one more time. And I'm gonna do it in mismatched socks. I cannot wait to see Madam Web. I just left work. This is the most excited I've ever been, and it's because it's it's the end of the journey. We're coming towards the finish line. It is in sight. It was not a couple of days ago, and now it is. This isn't a movie theater. Today, it's a finish line, so it's a shoe store. One more web, one more web, one more web. One more. I treated myself to a large sodi pop and the Dune popcorn bucket because I deserve it. I've seen this movie more than 99.99% of human beings. I earned this overpriced novelty item. It's tough to get your fingies in there. I will be taking this off for the movie. Our heroes feel like the best part of us. And stories feel perfect and powerful. Because here, they are. As the credits rolled for the final time, I couldn't help but smile. I walked out into a rainy city, but I didn't care. I'd finished my quest, and I had my bucket to hold my hand, which was surprisingly comfortable. I thought that was Madame Webb. I met up with Christine, drank a big ol' sangria to celebrate, and we toasted to the fact that Madame Webb was in the rearview mirror. The seventh time watching Madame Webb is not the best time. It's also not the worst time. It definitely is the last time. I think somehow Cassandra Webb has never seen a Christmas Carol because she says, sorry, Scrooge, you can't change the future, but he does. And uh, Tiny Tim? Tiny Tim, who did not die? The crowd goes crazy. Scrooge did it, he changed the future. Why is she telling Scrooge that he can't change the future? He literally does. This movie has changed me. Now anytime any minor thing happens, I'm gonna say, huh, New York City's a whole new level of crazy these days. Or in any situation where someone would say, you know, God works in mysterious ways, I will say, you know, her web connects us all. As soon as this movie's out on digital, that bit of her in the taxi going, Wow, that guy's literally crazy. Lock him up. That's going to be a TikTok sound. I know that the team behind Deadpool and Wolverine is scrambling, trying to figure out where they can stick Madam Web jokes into their movie. As of Sunday, February 25th, which is the latest date that BoxOfficeMojo.com will tell me right now, the movie has made $35 million. Uh, which is more than I have. That's about 35 million domestic. We're at 77 million worldwide. But a commercial flop at this level means the whole Sony Spider-Man universe is at stake, which I think would make for a compelling sequel. If I'm being honest, I feel like I'm gonna have to watch it tomorrow. Granted, I will have to see parts of it as I'm editing this video. But the next time I watch the movie, it's gonna be because some of my friends bully me into it. Not a hard takeaway, movies are more fun when you watch them with people. My favorite viewings were the ones where my friends came along with me. And my favorite one where I went alone was when there were five people behind me who also knew the whole Nicole Kidman AMC thing. I knew the crowd was down to clown and it was fun. So do I think you should watch Madam Web? Eh, it's not a well-made movie, but if you've watched this whole video, you know that. What I will say is if you do watch Madam Web, do it with some friends and watch it twice because the second time is so much funnier. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. It does mean a lot to me. If you enjoyed it and you wouldn't mind leaving a like or subscribing, I would really appreciate that. One other thing. I did not realize how big of a hit this was going to be. So I got off work and then I watched Madam Web for the final time. And just because of scheduling, today I also got to see, if I can get this open, <laughs> the first preview of An Enemy of the People starring Jeremy Strong. When I got out of the movie, my girlfriend and I went to grab some food and then I went to the theater, the, the play theater with this in hand. And I cannot tell you 
how many people were like, is that the Dune popcorn bucket? And obviously I'm not gonna ignore them. I have the Dune popcorn bucket with me. And so I'd say, yeah. And I'd show it to them. And I'd say, you wanna stick your hand inside? And it was about 50-50 yes, no. If you want clout, it costs $25. You can't use your AMC rewards on it. I tried. But if you just walk around with one of these, people are gonna come up and talk to you. So everyone's first question was, is that the Dune popcorn bucket? Which, it'd be really funny if it wasn't. But everyone's second question was, did you see the movie? And I didn't want to give them every bit of backstory. And I have not seen Dune Part 2 yet, but I think it'll be a pretty good movie. So to have people go from expecting that to hearing, no, actually, I saw that movie with Dakota Johnson that's absolutely bombing at the box office, that's priceless. I mean, really, it costs $25. But again, thanks so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, the camera shut off. God damn it. Bye.